three, two, one, and and a half, and. And here, you Robert muted him. The sound. Mr. Jerome Johnson, everybody. Oh, he got a big applause there. All right, so today's class, as promised, was learning how to record onto your USB. And hopefully we have enough time to show you how to do that to the CD as well. We kind of gave you a little bit of a a sneak peek of that on the last week's virtual variety class, but we had to kind of do it for a variety of instruments. So today we want to, since this is the A series class, uh, we're going to focus on the A series models. Now, if you happen to have, I don't know what all you have here, but if there's anyone here that has an SU series, um, you're going to find that the first step in this process is actually very similar. The difference is, is you'll be using the floppy disk. Okay. Secondly, if you have a, um, I think the Palladium Jerome has Palladium a, has okay. a, uh, there, Palladium has an, a CD on. If you have a CD, um, that step that we're going to teach you will work on virtually any CD model uh, or model that has a CD player. So that's just kind of the extra part of the class today. And then there is... For those of you, if you happen to have um, some of the other models that have recorder on it, the process is very similar. So I would just take some good notes. And if there's something that's slightly different on your model, my encouragement is reach out to a PA, personal assistant. If you don't have one, email me and I'll have someone get in touch with you. Um, and then we can kind of help you with that. So, Jerome, the camera is spotlighted on you. <coughs> I hope you're smiling. I am smiling today, All you know, right. because we gotta be this is one of my favorite like favorite subjects to talk about is the recording. And I started on this particular instrument, well, a version of this instrument. This is the uh, Prestige Plus. It is. Then before it was the just the Prestige, but this, uh, for his recording, there's no difference, okay? Uh, you want to do exactly like we talked mm -hmm. to. Number one, if you want to uh, take notes on this, number one, first thing we have to do is set up the instrument of what song you want to record, okay? Let's say uh, I'm going to still stick with my Christmas theme. I'm going to take it a little easier and go to the regular bossa nova on this one, I believe. No variation. There it is right there. Bossa nova, and I want to start off really, really light, so I'm going to take off the genie and the orchestra plus. Just like I say, you still got to do all these things. I got it ready. I'm ready for it. You got to do all these things before you even hit the record button. Um, and um, uh, if, if you want to record, it's very simple. You want to set up everything first. You might even want to set up a preset next, okay? Um, knowing that I got, I want to test my, my instrument out to see what I need to turn on or off.
first thing I need to do, these speeches are really good as, I, as we go. You might want to write these down. I like the Hammond organ sound, so I need to turn on my foot switch to the uh, right, and we're going to call this the we're going to call this the Bible Trim ro Rotary. So if I kick the, um, you'll probably hear the difference. If I kick the foot switch to the light, it's going to slow down the Leslie effect or speed it up. Okay, I got the background I want to get started with. Let's go. Memorize A1 whip style memorize. Okay? Right now, that's all I want to do. I just want to memorize that one because those, those are my main settings. The rest of the buttons I can touch as I go, all right? Because if I want to bring in a little bit more orchestration, what I'm going to do is, what you've learned already, is just add the genie or the orchestra plus or the drum variation. If you notice what I just did, stay right there for me, okay? Now we're going to test our Metley line out. In other words, your lead line, the lead guy, the Frank Sinatra guy, who's whoever's standing out in front. Today, I'm going to use the piano player standing out in front, standing out in front. All right. Um, the first song, the first thing I did was check out all of the volume. I think I need to bring down the organ in the lower left, just a pinch. I don't want it that loud. Let's try it again. I kind of like that. Okay. Now I think I'm ready to record. Now, if you want to set up preset two or preset three, you can. If you know your buttons, you don't have to. Now, before you do that, Strom. So I want to just real quick. Now we recorded this, so if you kind of want to know what he's using, that's okay. But the important part about this is not specifically what he's using or the setup, but the idea is, we mentioned this last week, if you're recording something, just make sure you have something set up that you want first. Now you guys and gals have uh, presets, so you know if you have them, use them. And basically what he was doing, the, the, the one advantage that we didn't get into detail last Wednesday and Thursday was the one advantage to having an A-series model or the SU-series models, you have presets you can program. And so it's always great to come up with a few settings that you like first. So he, he just did one example of what he was doing, and that's a great nice little setup there. But, but the most important message here is set it up the way you want it first. Test Make it sure out. test it out. Play it a few times. Rehearse it. Now he's not going to rehearse it a few times. So, <clears throat> um, but that's what he would normally do. He'd play it a little bit. He'd go back and go. Oh, I don't like that. Change that and just get it the way you want. So the the what the op, the actual steps in recording the mechanics. Push this button. Push that button. We're getting ready to do. But a lot of people forget that. There's also another important step is have the setting that you want. Just be prepared for that, okay? Because once you push record, you want to be able to go to your next setting smoothly. And the last thing we want to get rid of is those trembles, you know, those little nervousness. And a lot of times having it set in advance makes that part a little bit easier for you, all right? Let's do one more, Robert. I'm going to put He's up. He's going to do I'm another gonna, setting. Yeah, because I want to make sure when I make my uh, move to uh, play while it's recording, I can get there quicker. Okay, all right? well, let's see. So I'm going to turn on the genie. Hold on. Let me okay. get the camera to you. Okay. Here we go. So he's going to do another setup. I'm going to turn on the genie and the orchestra plus, and I'm going to put that in A2. Oh, my goodness. All right, let's do that one more time. A1. A1 is there. So now Memorize he's A2. A. Don't, push, don't forget to push the A. Push the A. Push the A. I won't hit the push style. Push A. There we go. With the style. Yeah, you have to have the letter on. Yeah, with the style. Okay. And then memorize. 
So the basic, we're, it's a whole nother class, but the basic way to memorize on an organ is, before you go any further, Jerome, I'm going to screen share this. Let's see, I have an owner's manual of a Sterling handy. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. If you go to, yes, it's going through very fast, but basically, I'm going to pick on here, saving a preset. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, <clears throat> on this, but basically, your bank presets there. You notice I just pressed it and went right to it. So what he did is he pressed memorize, followed by a letter, and then the screen will show up and it'll say memorizing two, and then he pushed a number that he wanted to save it on, and then on the screen, it'll tell him, I don't know if it's in this group here, it'll tell him when he's saving the preset, it'll tell him, do you want to save it with a style or with that and so forth, okay? But that's the general way to save a preset. All right, but that's a whole other class. Mm -hmm. Today's class is about recording, but you keep in mind you're going to want to learn to save a setup on your instrument. Memorize A1. Memorize A2. Memorize A3. And the only thing you have to ask yourself that's very important when the screen shows up is it'll actually say um, with a style. In this case, he's using... Bossa Nova? Bossa Nova. He's using Bossa Nova. So he said, yes, I want to save it with the style. And I'll bring up that screen in a moment. So you got it all set? I got it all set. So he's got number one. Mm -hmm. Push number two. Let's see. Number two is going to bring on G yeah, so plus he got it set. We got to make sure we try it out. That's what we told you. Exactly. All right. Take it off. So I'm now is off. the moment of truth. Oh. We oh. want to record now, right? We want to record, but I got to have something in there, Robert. Oh, what's that? Oh, got to have one of these in there. Oh, a USB. Yeah, let's open the drawer, you know. Let's USB, the stick. Stick. The thingamajig. <laughs> uh, we the doodads. The doodads, okay. And, the, and yes, we had a question. This, let me bar take that from you. Uh -huh. Let's see if I can get close here. All right, you see this here? Yes. This is... This USB fits on anything that's USB. There are different types of USBs, and uh, some have large files. Some, you know, you can have eight gigabyte, sixteen gigabyte. We always recommend try, um, try. Oops, I'm trying to do this and look in the camera at the same time. Try finding the smallest size that you possibly can if you're using it just for the organ. Again, another class. All right. So I'm going to hand this back to Jerome. Okay. And now that I'm ready to record, and hopefully I don't make too many mistakes, let me see. Do I need to push my drawer in? Yeah, because I might need to use that C down there. So I'm going to push that drawer back in a little bit. doesn't matter where you have it out of in. If you don't use that C in a little lower keyboard, fine. You can use it, always use the C up here, all right? Uh, the song that I'm recording today is called Emmanuel, all right? And I'm going to start off with the ending first. That's my introduction. Thank you. 
Now that I played it once, we're going to hit the record button now and go for it, okay? Now, Jerome, before you go on, did you okay. rehearse enough? I think I got it. Are you sure? I think I got it. You're very comfortable with it now. I'm glad I didn't record oh, that, on. okay? Yeah, <laughs> see, that, that happens. I noticed. Let me put the camera to me. I'm glad. I noticed a couple spots here. So you've know, <laughs> got to make sure you play it through. Now, in real life, you might do that four or five, six times. You might play it a few times, whatever the case is. <clears throat> the point is... Feel comfortable with it. The more comfortable you are with it, the less likely you are to have an oops while you're while you're playing. So I'm glad right. you told me so that because I, I thought of something else I should put in this song. Oh boy. I should have should have put a third registration there because I want the uh, the the ending to kind of be like on the intense side. So let's add more button lush with preset seven. And let's see what we got on preset seven. Number four. The vocal choir. I'm just going to play it one time so you can hear it. Ooh. All right, that's what I wanted at the ending. So now so I'm going to go back and memorize preset, right? And, uh, right, right in A3. Now watch this. While he's doing that, let me pull up on the owner's manual here. It says to memorize, what he did is he puts memorize. And he pushed A, and then 3, and if you look on the screen there, this example shows 1. He's already done that, but when you push Memorize A and a number, this screen will pop up. Joni, do you see that? Okay, I just want to make sure you're all seeing this. I kind of cheated, too, a little bit. Huh? I kind of cheated a little bit he for cheated number 3. cheated a little bit. Let me continue showing this, and then he'll tell you how he cheated. So Memorize A, and then whatever number he pressed... And then this option comes up, and it's asking me, do you want to save this preset with a style or with not? And here it says no. And when he presses it on the screen, it'll switch to yes, which is what he did. All right. And then you have the option of saving a transpose if you have a certain key. Now, this is, by the way, the Sterling manual. Uh, I don't know if it's in the same page on all of them, but I'll show you in a minute. Now, watch. See, here's an example. If you press yes... That shows up. Now, the beauty of this, folks, is that I'm not sharing anything that you don't have in your owner's manual. Whoops. <coughs> Back up. Yes. Now, there's one last step. This is the most important thing about saving a setup. And you'd be surprised how many times we get a phone call saying, my organ is broke. It's not saving my presets. You press memorize, a letter, a number, you choose with style or without, and the last thing you need to do, and I'm going to circle this here, you have to press, the last step is you have to press memorize, okay? I'm going to turn that in red so you see it. Boom. Whoops. Turn that in red. If you forget to press memorize as your last step, it will not memorize it successfully into the instrument. Now, if you have an owner's manual and you want to look for this, at the front in the table of contents, and then we'll go back to Jerome. Oops, let me scroll through back to the table of contents. And here we go. It's right, look for the table of contents under presets. You'll see <coughs> it, all right? And then it says customizing a bank preset. All right? Now, it may not be in the same page in all the manuals, but it'll say the same thing. Yes. All right? And then you can just go to that page, and then that'll teach you how to save a preset. All right? All right, so Jerome, he found a couple other settings that he wanted to do. I, I took a shortcut, Robert. In other words, I knew a setting in the organ for, for, for the, the prestiges and above. There's a setting under the more category or the category preset more button and it's called um, um, lush 
And I know in Lush, number seven is vocal, kind of a choir type voice, but I moved it. I took it from more choir and put it in A3 so I can, e so I can ask sex as easy as I'm playing. That's kind of cheating, but still it, it works. It's kind of a shortcut. In other words, you can mix and match. You can make your own, and then you can steal something from the category of presets. Now, before I go on, because the next step is you're going to hit record. Yes. Right? All right, we'll do that in a second. Before we go on to the actual recording now, does anybody have any questions? Any hands up? Speak now or I'll forever. Oh, your peace. Or forever. <laughs> Never learn this. <laughs> All right, so one last thing on that. He said something. I'm going to repeat it because we learn by repetition. And that is he used category setups. You don't always have to use what you want to design. You don't have to use rhythm, but you can use category setups. He took a sound from a category, and he chose to resave it on A3 in this case. So on A1 right. and 2, you kind of did your own, own thing. right? And then he went into category lush number 7. He said, I like that sound. And he resaved it on A3. Three. So now he's got three setups that you like. Now, are you sure you're ready? I'm ready. All right. He's been dragging this out. <laughs> I might not do this He's such tomorrow. a prima donna when it comes to recording. <laughs> I've got to have this sound. I've got to have that. It's got to be just for... And you should, too. When you're playing music, you, you should have it the way you want it. There's nothing wrong with going back and playing, rehearsing, rehearse. You're going to hear me say that a lot. Rehearse it, rehearse it, rehearse it. Make sure it's the way you want it, okay? Before you hit record, because you never know. I'll tell you. You be surprised. Sometimes you hit record and you get through the song, and it's magic. And at least you have one recording. And then you can go back and do another one and another one and pick and choose. Now, so now the moment of truth. <clears throat> to record, you're going to record onto the USB first, right? Yes. Okay. This corner here, Robert. All right. Now, let me, let me pull up the, the manual while you're doing that. So on the right side of the organ, if you see where he is at right now, before I screen share this, on the, the recording is typically on the A series and all the issues all located in the same general place. And let me pull up the manual. Let me get rid of this. Let's see here. Let me see. Music recorder functions. Let's see if I can pull up the... Is there a recording? Oh, recording your music. That's if you want to do it to CD. Let's talk about music recorder functions. Let's see if this page does it here. Whoops. See if I can pull this up. Presets, music. All right, I'll have to search for this while he's recording it. It's page so on the 30. Huh? Page 30. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So I'm going to go back to here and go to page 30. Woo, this is going to get me dizzy doing that, but. Okay. Formatting a USB. Now, by the way, if you have a brand new USB and you, and you record, It'll automatically format it for you. Just a side note. Okay. So recording a song on the memory stick. Now let's see. Is there a picture? Okay. Yes. All right. There's some, some buttons here. I just want to see what it is so I show you. Okay. So on the right side of the organ, you're going to see a button. And I'm going to put the camera back on to Jerome. Now you'll notice that he's got the recorder button, and if you remember in our last class, he pushed record. Now what he's going to do is he's going to push record, but he's not going to play or touch anything yet. And let's see, we should hear a metronome going at this point. So go ahead and do that, Jerome. All right, listen to that. Right now it's clicking. It's just going on and on. And in fact, I think I have my screenshot from that. 
Okay, perfect. Don't go anywhere, Jerome. Stay right there. Don't do a thing. Don't move. Don't touch anything. Okay, here we go. Sorry, folks. I wanted to get you this. Okay, so here is an example on this side over here. You'll notice right here on this side, all of the all of the models, the ASU models are very similar. All he did was he pushed record. Right now it is clicking. Nothing is happening. All you hear is the metronome. Nothing is being recorded. Now the minute he presses an intro button, the minute he touches a note, the minute he touches any button, the recording then begins. And keep in mind, if you still hear the metronome, when you play it back, the metronome will not play back. All right, so a lot of people are worried about that. It's not the case. So I'm going to take this off, and then I'm going to let Jerome record his song. done he's gonna press stop and it's automatically there now what do you do you want to hear it I want to hear it. now before he does anything folks that recording since it was just done in real time it's already programmed to be the song to be played as soon as you press play now I'm gonna show this screen real quick before he presses play and so all he's gonna do is simply Press the play button. Okay, so go ahead and do that, Jerome. <coughs> I think I know what happened. Did I touch something? You touched something while the metronome was playing, so it recorded all that time. I may be able to speak this up, though. No, just let it. Okay. You see, he should have rehearsed it some more. <laughs> <laughs> you can forward it. You can. Go ahead yeah, and forward it. Let's forward it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so this, this just proves my theory from earlier. When you push, there it is. Go ahead and press pause. Real quick. So what happens when he pushes record, if something got pressed at all, just remember, that's when the recording begins. All right? Sometimes you don't even tell if something's been pressed. It could have been just a little nub on the pedal or, or a note. I or think a, I hit the foot pedal uh, on the uh, right side. If he side. just barely yeah. even touched it, the organ assumes that recording is now in session. So this, I'm glad it actually happened because now it proves that what happens is if you do that, you'll end up, in this case, we had to wait a while and he had to even fast forward it. But once it's done, 
You press play and go ahead and resume. Okay, I'm going to go back just a little bit. And just hit. Yeah. You can go back and find it. Let's try one. Let's try it one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, no, seven. No. You can't do that. Oh, okay. I can't do, that's right. That's right. That song. It's got to be in play mode. <laughs> that's right. The other way. Keep going. Keep going. I need to go that way. There's song two. Song two. Go ahead and press play. So now it's... I'm going to fast forward a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's fast forward. We don't want to wait through all your blank space. <laughs> Keep going. You'll see it. You'll actually probably hear it when you're doing it, too. Yeah, that's, you recorded a lot of space there. There it is. There it is, yeah. You'll hear it. Now, while it's playing, if while it's playing, if you want to rewind, then you can rewind it. Press, press, and hold it. And it'll go back to wherever you go. Now. I can get it back where I can get it back where I can actually or you can go fast forward or you can do whatever. So your your rewind and fast forward work the same. Right. Now, now Jerome, let's go ahead and press stop. This is yeah. This is kind of perfect because what I want to do, you don't have to play the whole song, but what I want to do now, this is an example where if you do a recording, you go, oh, it didn't work out the way I wanted to. That didn't work out the way you wanted to, right? right. The song did, but yeah. we had a little uh, oops in the beginning. So here's what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to go ahead and when we're going to record another song, this is the part that's very important, folks. Because if you're putting in a fresh stick, or a stick for the first time, even if it's something that has multiple songs on it, when you put it in and power up from the first time, it automatically, it will automatically advance to the next spot on the, the stick. Now I'm going to pull the camera off here for a minute. Okay. So Jerome feels like he should record this again, right? Mm-hmm. And we won't have him record the whole song, but he's going to go through the same steps. He's got his presets ready. He's got everything. But here's the thing now. I want you to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hope I don't get anybody dizzy. You see the lights there, folks? They're solid. So that means on his USB, that song that he just recorded is there. This is the important part. If you want to record another song, you can't just push record and it'll advance. What you have to do is this. What he's going to do is go ahead and push one of the arrows. It's see, now, look, point your finger at the bottom row. Just, none of the buttons are lit. Right. Okay? Now, folks, forgive me. I can't see your faces right now because I'm near the earring. I'll, I'll come back in a minute because I'm holding the camera here. But you'll notice that none of the buttons on the bottom are lit. Now, what he's going to do is he's going to press one of the arrow buttons once. Just hit one of them. All right, and when he does that, hold on, you'll notice that the screen shows up. You see it says song one, song two. Song two is what he recorded today. Song one was from the last week's class that he recorded. Uh -huh. So he wants to record it again because he didn't like the way that it turned out. And he wants to get it right. So now on the screen, what he's going to do is press three. And it's got a highlight in blue. Now, when he does that, now look at this, folks. The lights are blinking. That means there's nothing in there. So let me leave it blinking. Let me scroll back over. Now, watch what happens. Push one or two, song one or two on the screen. Now, watch. They're solid. So if you want to record a whole entire song over on a different spot you have to go to the next spot one more time we'll go to number three 
solid, and it's blinking. And now, let me just put the camera back over here. He's going to push record again and record a beginning part of that song. And we may just, just do the uh, you ready? first few measures. Now watch what happens, folks. a shorter version of that just to show you. Now he's going to wait. It stops. Now let's see what happens when he pushes play. Notice how immediate it is this time because he, uh, he did it. Very good. Now, this is a good time. All right, now? This is a good time for me to look. I see some faces. I see some people scratching their heads. I see some squinting going on like that, you know, that thought process. So, questions before we move on. Inez? Yes. So, if those lights are solid, you're not recording. The only way for you to know that you're recording is the, those lights have to be blinking. Blinking red. Yes, if they're solid, what it means is there's already a song there. Right. The space is <clears> That's all that okay. means. Now, okay. it's a whole nother class, a whole nother hour. Yeah. Two. You okay. can record over that and add to it. Yep. Okay, it's a very similar process. But if you want to do a completely new song or you want to record it again in another spot, you just have to remember that if they're solid over there, that means there's something there. Now, you can push record and you can start it. But what you'll notice is the last recording you made will start playing. And then anything you do is going to be on top of that, okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. On the safe side, if you really wanted to do this, you can go to um, your USB, hit delete song. Okay. All right. And oh, number oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me get the camera. Let me get okay. the camera. They can't see that. No, they can't see that. They okay, let me do it again. That. Okay. Let me get closer. So he already knows that I don't want to keep that song in there. Okay. All right. So he's going to go. Delete. Go back to the feature button. Feature, okay. Go back to feature. All right, so right over here, there's a feature, and there's USB. So USB. he wants to go to the USB. Got my phone right in front of his face. The last and then he's the going to pick delete song. And then he's going to select the one he wants to delete. And then it says, are you sure? Yes. <laughs> You're going to be proud to delete that He said, that yes, <laughs> I'm embarrassed, but I got embarrassed online with 60 people. <laughs> and so, now this is going to be on YouTube and the world. That track is available now to put something new on it. <laughs> so now he can go back and record and do what we did earlier. Just remember on the screen that I showed you, if it's blank, it means there's, typically it means there's nothing there. When you record, it automatically says song one. Now you can go back and retitle it if you want. Again, another class, another class. Today we want to show you how to get it on the USB and how to get it to your CD. All right? Robert? Yes. Ramon had a question. Ramon, ask away. No, that's okay. You already answered it. I did? How yeah, are we good? Oh, my God. I almost so want good. to know what the question was now. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> this, I feel like this is Jeopardy. The question was, <coughs> that if you wanted to delete the song, can you delete the song? And then Ramon, I already answered that. Weren't you paying attention? <laughs> That's what I said. You oh, it's a good question. No. <laughs> I, was, I just wanted to make sure I knew which one it was. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very thank much. You. Um, so yeah, so you can do that. You can. There's all sorts of little things you can do with that. That ultimately, that's why we're doing these classes frequently. So if we try to teach you all in one class, then we won't have anything to talk about in the next several months. So, but now, that song is on the USB. 
right, Jerome? Yes, it's on the USB. Now we want to take well, it. We to have a big problem here because it's not on the CD. It's not on the CD. It's just that's just terrible, oh, and we got to get it from there over there now. Robert. Yes. Sylvia has a question. Sylvia, go ahead. <clears throat> Sylvia, you have a question. You'll have to unmute yourself, Sylvia. I had. I'm there sorry. There you go. And then Charlie will answer your question next, okay? Go ahead, Sylvia. What size USB stick do you recommend? The, the smallest, smallest one. one you can get. Well, I was told not to get one above 512 kilobytes, but they're not available. Yeah, that, that's, that was a, that was, there was a time where you could. Nowadays, you can't even find one that small. You can't um, find a one or a two gigabyte. Exactly. And it's, it's, a, it's a good dilemma. If you are using a USB just for the organ, just try to find the smallest one you can is all you'll need. And nowadays, uh, a four gigabyte, if you can find it, or eight gigabyte, costs uh, as less than what a 512 <laughs> did 10 yes. years ago. So, so I can purchase like an eight gigabyte and it will be. If, you be have to, if that's the smallest, yeah. I think every now and then you can go on Amazon and Google like one gigabyte or two gigabyte. And yes. you might find a little deal. I did a thing a few years ago and I bought a box of uh, 50 or whatever it was. Um, of one gigabyte sticks, and um, it was, you know, it was a good penny. You don't need to buy that many, but uh, you can, you might be able to find a deal or two. You want to get one that gives you at least, maybe you can get like five or something like that, because sometimes one tens. of those don't always work. They sell well, them in tens. I, I have purchased thirty separate ones, and none of them worked in mine, and they were up to two gigabytes. So yeah, sometimes the USBs are not. It's a hit and miss sometimes, but yeah. if you got a few of them, that you can do a lot with it. You can do a lot with two or three of them. Charlotte, I have a question. Hi. Yeah, hold on. One. Is that you, Barbara? Barbara. This is Charlotte. You... That's Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, Barbara. I saw your hand up. We'll get to you as soon as Charlotte's done. Don't go anywhere. Go ahead, okay, Charlotte. Uh... All right. Now, when uh, Jerome deleted the song, and that was on the song number two, correct? Yes. Right. Well, in that case, and he then, did. Okay. And then will will he be able to record another song on number two? Yes. yes because when you delete it off of the of the of the, uh, you're basically deleting it off the sick. It now makes that spot available again. Okay. So the next song that he records, he can push number two even though he's already recorded something on number three. Exactly. Because okay. when you bring up the screen again, like I showed you earlier, what yes. it'll show is two will be blank. Yes. Three will say song three, I think, and song and whatever song one. If it's blank, it'll, just, it'll basically just clear it. Even though you're deleting it, it's clearing that spot for you, and it's making it available. So the answer is yes. Okay. All so right. you have to go back. So you'd go have ahead. to go back. To rename it? If you want to rename it, yes. Okay. Because when, when you record a song onto the stick, you can't rename it till after anyway. Oh, it, okay. It automatically puts it as song one, song two, song. It automatically puts in that title. Then okay. you can go back, and there's another option on the screen that he had was delete. The other option is rename, and then you can go back and rename it. However yes. you want. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank All you. right, Barbara. Is Barbara there? Yep, she got to un unmute yourself, Barbara. <clears throat> Am I, can you hear me? Yep. At what point do you put the name of the song in that spot? After you record it. At what point do you? Okay, so. Yeah, so here's what you do. You go on the organ, you do everything Jerome said. You set it up, you get it all ready. You press record, you record the song, you like it, you keep it. Yeah, I'm going to keep it. And then it automatic, when you record the song, it automatically goes, it'll, it'll automatically title itself for you. It'll say song three. Then you can rename it at that point. Now, you don't ever have to rename it if you don't want, but then you re rename it at that spot. And so 
just to show you real quickly, I'm going to move the camera. I'm going to make you a little dizzy. So what Jerome's going to do is put USB, and then it says rename song, and then he's going to press three, and he'll type in the first three letters. Okay. Um, okay. So, you yeah, see right there? And then he'll go in and press uppercase and change that letter okay, to I got you. W, yeah, V, D, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Okay? okay? Thank you. Yep. So, now, he's got the song. Now, here's what you have to know. You don't have to rename it to get it on the CD, by the way. Okay? So it doesn't matter. But you, but you can go to the next step. Now, we want to get that song from the USB or if you have a, a palladium of the floppy to the CD. <clears throat> now we want to get it to on the CD. Now, if you don't have a CD on yours, you can invest in some money nowadays. Um, and the equipment's slightly different on how to use it, so that I wouldn't know how every process is a little different. But on the instrument, it's pretty simple. Now, here's the. here are some very important tips about recording onto the CD. And this is very important. So he has the CD. Uh, why don't you go ahead and lift that up there? Oh, never mind. He's going to push it in instead. So he's got the CD in. <clears throat> and number one, you can't use a CD that already has stuff on it. All right? It's best to use a CD that has, it's blank, it's, it's being freshly used, all right? And you just simply put the CD in, that's number one. Step number two, and this is probably the most important thing, right? Right. Like the volume? Yeah, that, actually. Okay, we'll uh, get to the volume in a second. But the first thing is, is you want to get the song ready on the stick. So go ahead and he's going he's gonna to activate that song. He's not going to record anything yet. He's just going to play it. He's just going to play it back. So go ahead and hit one of the arrows and find the song. So song Kong Three, King Kong Three. All right, and he's going to play it. Make sure it's there. Okay. Now there. notice how he stopped. It goes back to the beginning. So. Okay. It'll always go back to the beginning when you press stop. If you just press pause, it'll do just that. It'll pause it. Okay. <clears throat> He has it in queue. Now, let's see what happens when he pushes play. Go ahead and push play again. Oh, okay. Just want to show him. Okay, press stop. Okay. So right now, that song is in queue. It's ready to go. Now what he wants to do is he wants to get it on the CD. Now, let me see if I could find this page on the manual. Because there are some very important... This is very important steps. Let me go to the beginning here. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I want to get it right for you. Let's see. CD. Here it goes. How to use this. Oh, here we go. CD. Stick to CD. All right. So formatting uh, music recorder playing a recording from a memory stick to a CD I think this might be it if not I'll just tell you first thing to do is hit the display button there's a recorder the CD I think I'll just take my camera off and show it to you to be faster right. It'll okay be faster all right <clears throat> so Victor I want you to Follow me around. So I'll try to keep steady hands here. Sorry, folks. I have it on a tripod here. Just as long as... Okay. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry. All right. <clears throat> I got to get a longer cord for my camera. All right. So here's the song that he recorded. I'll press play again. Now you notice when I press stop, it just stops, and when I press play, it'll start over. Okay? Now if I press play, 
and then press pause. It's in pause. If I press play again, it'll just pick up where it left off. Okay, that's not what we want. What you want is to have that song queued up like you see it right there. It's ready to go. The CD is in the in the device, and then what he's going to do is push display, display and, and then when the you do that, this shows up on the screen. Track zero. Zero, zero, that means this is a fresh, you can tell this is a fresh CD. Zero, zero, zero. All right? This is a 70 minute CD, I believe. So right now, it just, it, there's nothing, it, you don't do anything here. This will just show you what's on the screen. Now, before he presses record, this is the part you want to keep in mind. We're going to talk about these buttons. However, there is something in the matter of Volume. Hold that right there for a minute. Hold on. Steady hands here. Let me put the camera. You come over here. Bear with me, folks. I want to make sure you know this so you don't have any issues. <coughs> All right. I'm going to put the camera to me for a moment and just speak to you. Okay. So we've got the song ready. It's in queue. We've got the CD ready to go. I'm gonna, we're gonna come back here in a minute, but this is the most important part for sound quality. The volume of the recording depends a lot <clears throat> on how you have it set. Now I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna ask Joni to correct me. It's either one or the other, but I believe, because I haven't done this in a while. You wanna make sure that your expression pedal to the floor. Is all the way at a hundred percent. Correct. Did you get that? If you your expression pedal, where you put your foot, your volume pedal, you want to make sure that's all the way at a hundred percent, like you're driving a thousand miles an hour. Now, most people when I say that go, well, gosh, that's going to be loud. No, you can control the volume on the master volume however you want it. When you record from a USB or floppy to a CD, it records its best volume when the expression pedal at, is at its max. In, in fact, I would say put your foot in there, get it all the way to 100% and just take it out and leave it there. Okay? Now, I'm going to steal the take, camera you back. Mean, you mean What's that? You mean take your foot out and leave it on the floor, right? Yes. Yes. What did I say? Never mind. Did I say take your foot off or something? <laughs> no, you take your foot off your ankle. <laughs> you said leave it out. <laughs> okay. No. So down here, I have the expression pedal. The drum has it all the way up as far as it'll go. You'll notice his foot's not there. It's, oh, look at those pretty green socks. <laughs> okay. So it's all the way. The reason for that is he, he can't accidentally mess with the volume while it's doing that. Now, I'm going to come back over around. All right. All right. Now, you'll notice his master volume is at a tolerable level. He has it at one, two, three... A little, little more than halfway. And in your home, you can do it to whatever you want. Some people put that all the way down to one. It doesn't matter where this is. What matters is, is the expression pedal, the volume pedal, is all the way. I had a student once, did all of this. He recorded 10 songs. He wanted to show his kids and couldn't figure it out. And what happened was he had this at 100% and the expression pedal was down quite a bit. It picks up the volume at its best volume based on the expression pedal, okay? All right, so now I'm gonna come back over. So now that we have, we have the song in queue, he pressed the display button so that's shown in the screen, and it's not terribly important, but it's just good to see it. 
and then the expression pedal's all the way up. We got that. Right. Now what he's going to do is he's going to push the record. Now this is what's cool about this. Go ahead and push record once. It's blinking, and then, hold on. Okay, so now you'll notice that the record is blinking and the play pause is blinking. Now let's look in the screen. Now the screen changes. It says track zero, time zero because there's nothing played yet recorded. Track one, and it says how much time we have remaining on this CD. Now, pay very close attention. Nothing is being recorded right now. Right now it's, it's just ready to go. Here is the trick. The minute, and I'll tell him to do it when it's time. I want to explain it to you first. The minute he pushes the play pause button, the CD is officially recording whatever is coming out of the organ. So that's why we want this to be ready to go. Because it'll automatically, folks, write this down or go back and watch the video. It will automatically add, I think it's like two or three seconds. Yes. So even if you're really fast, it'll always add at least two or three seconds. Because if you do multiple songs, you want a little break in between each song. Right. So the minute he presses play here, what you're going to notice him do is he's going to reach up and hit the play button here. So now what he's doing is recording what was recorded. All right. So I'm going to go back so you could see how he does this. And you'll notice he'll go as quickly as he can without hitting any other button. Ready? Go. Go to the screen. Now, while that's happening, it'll say recording. Now we'll let him finish it out. Now, as soon as it's done, wait for it to be done completely the way you want it. And now he's going to come over and then he pushes stop. And then everything goes away. Now, before he presses play, you'll notice it says track, track one and 34 seconds. Now let's see what happens if you push play. Now what you're hearing is a CD being played back not the organ and you can control that volume here however you want it now go ahead and press stop okay now before I go on to the next thing pardon let me get this camera up the ear why don't you hold that for me for a second are there any questions Okay, Inez. So when you push stop, you push stop on the CD recorder and on the music recorder or just the CD recorder? No, you won't have to because what's happening, you don't have to do it in both places. When you press play. Both places. No, hold on. When you press play. Yeah. And you, and you record and you very quickly press play on the song that was recorded. Right. You're going to let that song play until it's done. Because right. it's recording that the whole yeah. time, all right? Yeah. Now, when your recording is done, what you have on the USB will automatically stop. Okay. So there's nothing else to press stop over. Now, I guess you could if you want to press stop again, but it'll stop on its own because those USBs <clears throat> are designed to do that, all right? Here's, you definitely want to push stop on the CD. Now, here is... Yeah. Here is the here's here's another another um, important side note. Many of you know that the USB has the option to play do a, what's called a chain songs. Yeah. So it goes from one song to another. When you're doing this process, I would make sure that that chain songs feature is off. 
Now you may ask, why is that? Why is that? (laughs) I'm glad you asked, Inez. (laughs) Because what happens is, the chain songs does exactly what it's supposed to. Once the song is done playing, it goes to the next song. And if you're not careful, you may not stop the CD in time. On time. It may start, and you may have that. So it's always best to have that off. Now, I've had some people say, well, wouldn't I want to record 10 songs onto the CD? You can, but here's what will happen. If you just have 10 songs playing and you put it on the CD that way, it puts it all under one song. One track, yeah. One track. track. And now you're stuck listening to all 10 songs on one track. You can't fast forward on, on a CD like you normally would. So it's best to put each song on an individual track track. unless you're purposely making a medley that's a different story okay Uh that's why i always say you record your song whether it's five a medley one song two song three song and then do each individual one on a separate track on the cd okay what is the benefit of putting these songs from a usb to a cd because then once you format it which finalize it you can play it in a car that has a CD player, you could put it in a stereo that has a CD player. Some people can even go a step further and transfer the information from the CD to a computer and, and email it to somebody. Okay. All right. Or you might sell them on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> make because enough money, make enough money to buy a backup organ. You know? <laughs> Sometimes it's okay to have two organs. <clears throat> you can make it from your CD money. Yeah, okay. Sometimes it's just a matter of this, a little pat on the back. Well, the other thing is, too, when you record it onto the USB on the organ, it's in a Lowry format. That format cannot be played on anything other than a Lowry instrument of that kind. So if you recorded songs on a USB and you give it to a friend, whoever, you say, hey, listen to me, their computer won't recognize it. Okay? Okay. Now, Charlotte, you have a question? Yes. Um, you mentioned that Jerome pressed the play button when he recorded it to the CD, that he pressed both play buttons, both the, the recorder, CD recorder and the music recorder, but he has to do it quickly. Now, what happens if you don't get to the other one quick enough? It'll just, it'll add a little extra time in there before. It... Oh, so, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, the CDs, the CD, on the other hand, when you when you start recording on a CD, uh-huh. it automatically puts in about a two or three second blank spot in there. Oh, so we okay. always say have it queued up. So the minute you go to restart recording the recording process, you can just hit play uh-huh. on the other song. And we're going to do another one because I want to show you this is a little easier to do on a CD. When you want to re- add another song to the CD... What's neat about this is it'll automatically go to the next track for you. So I'm going to do this process one more time. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, we'll just use the same song just to show uh, you. I picked another one. I had one on there already. Oh, he's I got another, another song on there. there. So we'll go now. Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Hold on one second. Let me. Can you do this for me? Come around this way. Just hit the uh, little arrow there. I think it's and a then, song. Uh, I, yeah, that webcam. Okay. All right. So what he did is he brought up, he had a song one on there from the other day. I don't think it's too much time elapsed on it. So. Yeah, well, he doesn't have to record the whole thing, whatever. Right. So he's going to press play real quick just, just to make sure it's ready to go. We don't like that one. Oh, don't play that one. Oh, really? Yes, you recorded it on the symphony. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> that's right. All right so let's we just... may have something goofy here. Let me see. Go ahead and we'll see what happens. Hopefully okay. We'll... All right. So we got the next song here. Let's see. Okay. All right. So he's got that song. We'll just pretend it's another song. Okay. All right. Now look on the screen. The CD says track one. Now here's what's cool. Watch this. Jerome is going to push, and I'm going to come back to his hand. He's going to push record again, but here's what's cool. Nothing is going to be recorded. 
It's going to, you see it blink in here. It's ready. Now watch what happens on the screen. It automatically goes to track two for you. Yeah. Now that is the beauty of the CD, is it automatically advances. So you don't ever have, you can't record over another song. It's, it's not possible. All right. Same process. The song is ready to go here. His fingers are ready to go here. He pressed stop, and then he did that. Now, the song can play out however you want. When the song is done, whether you push stop here or on there, let it play out, he pushes stop here. Same process. And when it's done, now look on the screen, he now has track one and two. Now, if on the instrument, he has a little track button. Which one is the track button? The one in the middle. The double arrow? Oh, double arrow. Or the That's one it. arrow. Okay. The, 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 so the the one arrow advances the track. The double arrow is just a rewind and fast forward. Right. So I'm going to go back to track one. Actually, he'll just do that while I do this. Track two. See? Track now, if he one. tries to go to track three, there is none because there's nothing on right, there. Right, right. All okay. right? Track one. Now, there's one more step in the in the process here. But before we do, I don't want to do that. I want to use this again. So I don't want to hit the finalize button yet yeah. because I want to use this CD. Well, I was going to some, say that. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other the other thing is is let's say you know you got two songs down, you got them on the CD, and you're like, "Whew, that was good." Now you you know you're going to do three or four or five or six more songs you want to add to it. Okay? Just, well, in case, just in case the neighbor come over, come over with a pie and you got to stop. Yeah. We're going to eat some pie. Yeah. <laughs> but if you want to add another song to it later on, here's the <coughs> thing. This CD, you can keep adding to it and adding to it until you do what's called finalize. All right? Write that word down, finalize. Now, here's what you also need to know is if I take that CD and I try to put it in a, a CD player, it won't play. It won't play until it's been finalized. Okay? That's whether it was one song or 20 songs. It doesn't matter if you had two songs, five songs, six songs, 20 songs, whatever the case is. It won't play until we finalize it. And... Once you finalize the CD, you can no longer add songs to that CD. So the key word is finalize. Right. That means final. <laughs> no more do you can do with the CD. All right? I guess we have to do this part to make We're sure. We're going to have to show you how to finalize it. So now Jerome is going to waste his CD. <laughs> but, you know, that's a sacrifice that Jerome makes for his students here. <laughs> He cares about the students of Flex Music Centers, and he's willing to pay for this CD just to show you how to do this in this class. Fifteen dollar TV, man! I tell you, CD. CDs are worth a lot these days. You know, let me put it over here. All right. So, right now, this is the how we have it. This doesn't matter. On the organ, you'll see a button that says "Finalize." Now, folks, let me remind you: do not push this button unless you are sure that that CD's got all the songs you want on it. You know what's really cool? CDs aren't really that expensive. No, they're I'm not saying. that expensive. I all. think it's great that you just pick one and find one. You just record stuff and do stuff to it that you don't care about what's going to happen because that will get you the practice of using this. All right? Now, he's going to push finalize and watch what it says. It says, warning, finalized... Finalizing the CD allows you playback on other CD players. You cannot record on a finalized CD. Once you, it's basically saying, once you do this, that's it, folks. <laughs> All right, and then you sit, press OK. Do not press any buttons. When this box goes away, your disc is finalized. Now, this one won't take as long because there's only two songs on it. Right. If you have a CD that has um, you know, 10 or 15 songs in it, it'll take a little bit longer for this part to go to happen. And then it's going to, oh, there it goes, it's done. Mm -hmm. So you could, you can imagine there was two songs and how long it took. So if you had 10 songs, 
that process may take a little longer, so don't be surprised just, if it just does. Just be patient. All right? Now, he can play it back here. He can still play it back here. But now he can take the CD, put it in a car. You can put it on a, a boom box. You can put it on a whatever. Send it to the kids. Send, send it off to the kids. Now, if you notice, uh, what was that song? Is that a... Wasn't even the song you were playing there. Emmanuel. Is that a holiday song? Yes. It's a oh, Christmas come, song. Come I notice he's been playing yeah, a lot of Christmas well. songs lately. Yeah. And I, the point is, this is the time you either kind of be rehearsing those songs. <laughs> by, yeah. by the time October, November rolls around, you might have a pretty good CD <laughs> that you can send off to your kids or whoever or friends. If you don't have any friends, it's a good way to make one. Make them a CD. Yeah. And... I'm going to put the camera back to here, to me. Whoops, wrong button. You ever push the wrong button on a computer? No. And essentially, that is how you record. Now, we went through some other steps, rehearse, play the pieces, but essentially, in short, you record it onto the stick, you prepare it to play back on the USB, you get it on the CD, you press record, then as soon as you press record, you're playing the USB back. And then when it's done, you press stop. And when you do that process step by step, you then uh, finalize it. Once it's finalized, then you have yourself a CD. Ramon, do you have a question? Or did I answer I your do. question again? I do. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Robert. Well, go ahead. What, here's a question real quick. Okay. Um, so let's say I recorded two songs on a CD. Okay. I did not finalize it. Okay. Yep. Something comes up and I forget about the CD. Then I, a week later, I put the same CD in and those two songs are still there? Yes, yes. they are. They're, they're on the CD. They just cannot be played back on anything other than your Lowry at that point. And then I can record... Three, yeah, four, yeah. Then yeah. you can go back and add. So you might want to make a notation to yourself somewhere, so you know that that CD is <clears throat> not okay. finalized. Yeah. yeah, and then you may forget it about again, and a month later, come back and go, oh, oh, I got four songs in here. Let me add a couple more to it. it, it that's not something you have to do right away. But here's okay. what's the cool thing. That's why we did recording onto the USB or your floppy first, because once you have a bunch of songs that you want. You can always play those back. They're there. Then you can go back and add whatever ones you want to the CD at any time. Yeah. Again, the best thing to do to do this is get a USB and some CDs that you just don't care what you record onto them. It doesn't matter if the song's good or bad or the mis. It's not about that to learn the process, the, the actual steps. Then when it's time, then you rehearse it a little bit, have some fun with it, et cetera, et cetera. And if you got um, four or five sticks with four or five different songs on it, you can always take them out, put one in, and put that one on the CD. And oh, I don't like that one. I'll put the other one on the CD. Take another stick out. You can. Yeah. You so can, you got the here's a great example that, uh, of that. Jerome has recordings that he's made. I have some. Joni has some. This person has. A lot of a lot of students have miscellaneous recordings from different artists. Well, you have everything you ha need to make a CD. You can say, well, I like the song that Robert recorded, and I happen to have this on this USB. You can put that on the CD. And he said, well, I got a recording of Joni's song that she does, The Big Spender or whatever. I really like that one, and I want to put that on the CD. And you can make your own CD with other artists using mm -hmm. the same steps because this stuff's already recorded for you. All you have to do is the next step, which is put it on the CD. And I'm Robert. sure. Yes. When you go and buy a CD, is there choices? You just buy a blank CD. Oh, on, the on CDs the eight, are blank. Yeah, just an eighty minute, eighty minute version is common. Usually, it's like an eighty minute version of that, and usually you can okay. get a stack of them for like twenty bucks these days. I don't know. Less than that in some cases. You can get them twenty five cent each. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, get get a you can get a nice little spool of them, like twenty five or thirty of them. Or, okay. Know. Even if it's a dollar a piece, it's okay because you're going to use a couple for whatever practicing and then the rest you'll use as you need it. Yeah. But just I didn't know mind, that, if I you happen to have recordings of artists 
or any one of us, you can do the same. The recording part is done. Now you just got to transfer it to the CD. You can create your own CD with all the other artists. The only problem you might have if you have a SU model, <clears throat> trying to convert it to a CD player is, can be a little mind-blowing. Uh, it's not as easy as most people think because you got to have a different format. You got to transfer a file from this, transfer a file from that, and trust me, it is a pain in the neck. So I highly recommend if you have an SU, trade up <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> well, wouldn't you do that, Robert? <laughs> Especially at the new prices. All right. <clears throat> Sharon, you have your hand raised? Um, can I, can you hear me? Yep. yep. Oh, okay. I'm wondering if, you know, uh, can you take a, rec a CD or a recording or the USB stick from the Patriot and put it into a symphony? Yeah, so I'm yes. glad you mentioned this. Just remember this, a prestige. You have a prestige currently in your house. You mean, okay. Here's, here's something very symphony. important to remember. The symphony's on the way. Yeah, the, the oh. symphony's on the way, by the way. It's on the road, or it's going to be. Uh, anyway, here's a, something very important to remember. Some people like to share USBs, and that's okay. But it's, easy, it's easier to use a USB for a model that's above not backwards. For example, when we were playing, he wanted to play the other song. He had a song one recorded on there already. And it started doing some funny noise. And I very quickly remembered he recorded that on the symphony. On the symphony. <laughs> and I'm glad I stopped it because the last time I did something like that, the organ made a real loud bang noise and I had to turn it off and restart it. And sometimes one may work with the other because they have the same, like it may use a big band with a big band, but if it has a big band with a sound that's on an organ that doesn't exist on another, that's enough to confuse the computer. And sometimes weird things will happen. So that's why when he played back the recording, it wasn't working right because he used some stuff on the symphony that wasn't on the prestige. And the organ was starting to try to figure it out, and that's not good. So we quickly pressed stop and went to the recording. Now, if I take this recording on this USB, on this Prestige, and I put it on a Patriot, Symphony, Sterling, anything above it, it will work because all that stuff is already in there. Okay. okay. Yep. I'm glad you asked that That's question. That's a good question, more so, more so for those of you, because a lot of people have friends with this organ or that organ, and just, just got to keep in mind... You can't go backwards. It, it, it may work, and if it doesn't work, something bad may sound. It won't. I don't know if that'll break the organ, but it may sound like it is. You can always go up. Okay. I've done that twice. <laughs> yes. All right, Charlotte. Well, you have one more question. We're gonna have Jerome finish off a little number. <clears throat> Class went a little longer than usual, but we want to make sure you got a lot of what you need. Yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay. Now, um, next week, I'm going to do a, a, a surprise class, and I'm going to have you all come back and tell me what you've learned. No, I'm just kidding. I thought I heard Gary on there. Uh, it's all right. Larry. Larry? Yeah. Yeah. Hi, yes, Larry. Uh, you know, I love to hear Jerome sing, and I'm going to ask a question. It's probably a dumb question, but can you record on top of the organ? With yeah, the, uh, let me singing. grab that hand mic. Oh, uh, yeah, I can do that right now. You don't need a hand mic. You got a microphone in your head. No, right? I was going to do it on the CD, but oh, because you need I'm to on plug a different it organ. The organ. Yeah, if I was on oh, EX, okay. it'd be Watch different. Watch this. Watch me, Jerome. Yeah. Watch this. We're going to do, Larry, for you, we're going to do this. Now, there's a couple things you can do. And in fact, we'll, we'll close off the session this way so we have one song. I'm going to keep your microphone on your head. Okay. okay. All right. Now he's going to be muted for a moment because I'm going to unplug it from the audio and then I'm going to plug it into the organ so that this thing will be plugged into the organ. Let me uh, turn the microphone down. They can't hear you yet. Okay, do a little test test. No, talk.
Test. Talk. Test. Test. Talk. Test. Test. Test one, two. Probably turn the monitor down here. Go ahead, check it. <coughs> test one, two. Keep testing. Test one, two. All right, this is a little tricky. A little tricky because we're trying to, go ahead. Test one, two. Okay. Well, we'll do the best we can with this because I'm trying to do something with the microphone. I have them plugged in. Now, just a nod of heads. Can you hear Jerome's? One, two. Okay, they're all nodding their heads. Okay, hold on. Now, before we do this, not everybody can sing and play at the same time. So a little fun trick, if you ever want to try this out. Record the song first okay it's, it's actually a fun thing you can do you can record the song first and then when you go back and do what we did on the CD plug in a mic and then sing along with it because sometimes it's hard for me to sometimes it's hard for me to sing and play at the same time so if I want to have fun with it I'll record it first and then when I go to record it on the CD, I'm playing back my recording so I don't have to worry about my hands. Then I could put in the microphone. And then once I'm doing the CD part, I'm singing along with my recording. Okay? So that's one way to do it. If you do it that way, my only encouragement is this. Play less melody hand and more chords of the song. Because if you're playing too much melody, you're melody and melody. Okay? You can figure out how you want to do that. What Jerome likes to do, he's a little braver. He can set up the organ however he wants, and he records directly onto the CD using the steps that we set. So in this case, this is what I'm going to do. That's what he's going to do. So you can do it either way. Record it first on the USB, then play it back. Sing along with it. And sing along with it, or record right to the CD. The CD recording part is the same. you got your volume all the way up, right? Yeah. You got to remember that on your expression yeah, you panel. Keep it all all right, so here we go. He's going to push record go. on the CD. Oh, you can't. Well, we finalized. Uh, you finalized the CD. Another, we CD finalized the CD. Remember? Another, another what did we say earlier? You can't add to the CD. This another. is why you don't want to finalize it. Yes, it's two years short. Oh, you have, my God. That's why you would have 50 of these. That's why you have another one of these. <laughs> You know, I tell you, Jerome must really love you. I've used so many of those he, over the years. He okay. loves you so much. He is giving up another CD just for you. I tell you, the love. I can see they're, they're all blushing right now. I look at the blushing faces. I just can't. I can't. Look at all the. <laughs> well, that, was, that was part of the class. That was a good thing. <laughs> see? That's what happens when you finalize it. Now he's got it set uh, up. I just for... want to make sure I got the right sound. So I'm ready to go if you're ready. All right. He's got it. I'm going to push re display, record. It's going to get ready to go. And here we go. One. And I've been so many places in my life and time. I've sung a lot of songs. I've made some bad rhymes. And I'm a loving David With 10,000 people watching We long now I'm singing the song for you And I know your image of me Is what I hope to be I've treated you up gallantly But you can't resist There's no one important to me
Applause and E flat, please. Applause and E flat. I'm going to press stop. Yay. So that song was recorded onto directly to the CD. And then he can play it back, of course. And I've been so many places in my life and time. Oh, I did. I part, part way through. Oh, awesome. Yeah, you'll notice. Acting out my love and with 10,000 people watching. So that's the recording that he just did. It's right on the scene. I'm singing the song for you. And I know your image of me is what I hope to be. I've treated you unkindly, baby, can't you see? <laughs> we can get <laughs> this is an endless topic but anyway all right you can go ahead and pause that there so that's that's your class today for recording we went a lot longer but there's some ins and outs with it we just I want to make sure you have all the information um, that you have then tonight I will have this posted on YouTube and um, if you get stuck give me a call yeah you can you can always um, you can always look it up. Give us a call. Give your PAs a call. Did you only know how to do this quite well? Oh, you got your microphone on. A, oh, yeah. I was playing around with the... Uh, he sounds like a grizzly bear now. So anyway, well, that's all I have for you folks. Stay tuned in for some other events. Uh, keep in mind, everything on the, on the um, product feature classes, the, um, the Zoom, uh, Zoom musicals is all now on the website. You can go onto the website and look up uh, under upcoming classes and events and all the links to the classes. Get used to doing that because by, my goal is by November, all of the standard classes are going to be, you, you'll have to access them through the website. But I'll keep doing emails for the next four to six weeks to keep you up uh, uh, informed. So anyway, we hope you enjoyed today's class. Let's give, we need to give Jerome a big round of applause. Let's do a little unmute, everybody. Oh, big, we, we was getting into the um, vocal recording on this. Hey! All kinds of things you can do. Oh, that's all hey. that's what hey. stuff. Good job. Good job. Big round of applause, everybody. Thank big round. You. All right. Thank I'm going to cancel. Thank, Thank you, folks. You. We hope you enjoyed, and God bless. Take care. Thank Mwah. you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Okay, leave. Okay.